Well, thank you for bringing quinolinic acid to my attention through your educational video on sleep. I was not aware that long-term use of 5-HTP could increase this excitotoxic, neurotoxic metabolite. I am unable to find how 5-HTP, but not tryptophan, would increase quinolinic acid. Can you clarify this for me? Yeah. And are there natural ways to prevent any negative effects of quinolinic acid? Well, yes, it's, a, it's an important question. If you start with what we recommend, which is tryptophan, the amino acid, the body will convert that directly to serotonin, but it, can, it does convert some of it to 5-HTP. However, if you give 5-HTP as a supplement, you don't get the same conversion to serotonin and melatonin. That's what you would really want to have. That's your favorable outcome. That's what you get from the tryptophan. And what others have shown in all species, this is from rodents to macaques, including people, is that 5-HTP preferentially goes to that excitable neurotoxic quinolinic pathway, and in my opinion, should not be used. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have enough ascorbate as an antioxidant to reduce the oxidative conversion to the quinolinic acid, that will mitigate, to some extent, the issue, but you avoid the problem by just avoiding the 5-HTP. And it's a question mm -hmm. I get all the time. Well, I like 5-HTP, and I remember when tryptophan was under a cloud. Well, it was under a cloud because of a contaminant in a specific batch of tryptophan that caused eosinophilia myalgia syndrome. And we have some publications from way back when using uncontaminated tryptophan to reverse eosinophilia myalgia syndrome showing that it had to be a contaminant in the bad batches because healthy, uncontaminated tryptophan reversed the problem. So it's not at all obvious when we look at the conversion of tryptophan to 5-HTP and serotonin and then going on to melatonin, but going on where it's needed and it's used quickly when produced and needed, in contrast to flooding the body with 5-HTP that preferentially goes to an excital neurotoxin uh, pathway. Um, it's not widely appreciated, but biochemistry does tend to be a little bit detailed. And I had the great good fortune of, of studying with a really wonderful biochemist and fell in love with the territory. So for me, these are all familiar molecules, but for most of our colleagues, um, they're in the background, shall I say. They're, they're, there's not enough uh, awareness, which is why, as you know, through the PIH Academy, we're doing our best to get the facts out, the evidence out, so that people can see the safer and more effective forms. 